Alrighty, let's begin unit two on cell structure and function. In this unit, we're gonna explore cells as a unit of life and how do cells contribute to the organization of life and provide the environment in which organelles can function. Cells and cellular organelles, they have membranes that enable them to establish and maintain an internal environment and control exchanges with the external environment. This maintenance of internal and external cellular environments is what we call homeostasis, a word I'm sure AP biology students are familiar with. An understanding of the principles of cellular homeostasis is important to understand the material in this following unit. We're also going to utilize some skills by being able to explain relationships between the cell structure and the cell function, the function of the organelles and all the cellular components on a subcellular and cellular level. <laughs> that was quite a mouthful. But you should become proficient in describing data, making calculations and analyzing different types of data through this unit as you've been introduced to it from unit one. Cells are the basic structure and functional units of every living organism. All cells have a certain set of characteristics. Commit these to memory. All cells are bound by a plasma membrane. They all contain cytosol. That's that jelly-like substance that's internal inside the cell. They contain chromosomes and of course they contain ribosomes. There's two major types of cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are old world, primordial, ocean, very, very old cells. They belong to the domains bacteria and archaea. You might have heard archaea bacteria. The DNA in prokaryotes is in a nucleoid region, but it's not bound by a separate membrane. And they're also generally smaller in size than eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are cells that you've been learning about for a long time. They include organisms from the protist group, fungi, animals, and plants. They're special in that their DNA is inside a nucleus contained within a membrane. And they have lots of bound organelles. In some more detail, prokaryotic cells, they're very, very small, and for the most part, they're all single cells. They lack that membrane-bound organelle, and they're relatively unstructured with little cellular organization. Stuff just kind of floats around in there. Their DNA, the ribosomes, and even other enzymes are free-floating, and they're all free-floating within that cytoplasm. Ribosomes are actually smaller than they are in the eukaryotic cells. They're smaller than we find eukaryotic ribosomes. They also have a single cellular chromosome. It has this naked DNA, which means it's like not associated with any sort of protein. And they commonly have small circular ancestral chromosomes, and we have come to call those plasmids to give them a different term. Photosynthetic bacteria have enzymes that capture light um, through a particular membrane known as chloroplast. And other prokaryotic cells have cell walls, but they're different in composition from the cell walls of eukaryotes. Perhaps you've heard of some examples of prokaryotes like E. coli or maybe cyanobacteria. You know, we said eukaryotes, they have this complex cell structure and it has a high degree of organization, including these membrane bound nucleus and organelles. These are cells that are with more sophistication, have examples like plant cells, animal cells, fungal cells, protist cells. Eukaryotic cells are quite a bit larger and they may exist as a single cell or they could make up complex multicellular organisms. Their genetic material is found is a uh, multiple linear chromosome called DNA, and it has associated proteins with it. Their ribosomes, though, are significantly larger than they are in prokaryotes, um, and they do have mitochondria and chloroplast that are also significantly larger than we find in prokaryotic cells. 
some of these cells can you can find single cell examples um, like with euglena which is a type of protist